ప్లే చేసేది అక్కడ సంతోష్ ఇరా ప్లే చేసేది ఏదే శ్రీధర్ హలో షాల్ ఎ స్టార్ట్ షాల్ ఎ స్టార్ట్ ది సెషన్ గుడ్ ఈవెనింగ్ టు ఆల్ ఎస్టి ఫ్రెండ్స్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ ఫర్ టుడే వెబినార్ ఇన్ డెవలప్మెంట్స్ ఇన్ ఫార్మాస్యూటికల్ ఇండస్ట్రీ ఆర్గనైజ్డ్ బై డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఫార్మాస్యూటికల్ రెగ్యులేటరీ అఫైర్స్ అండ్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఫార్మాస్యూటికల్ బయోటెక్నాలజీ organized by hindu college of pharmacy guntur andhra pradesh india i feel happy to announce that many participants have registered across the globe from the fraternity of pharmacy to attend this international webinar to make this unexpected day more useful and more contentful and more fruitful due to this academic uh, pandemic covid-19 the management of hindu college of pharmacy has taken this initiation to organize a successful a series of webinars from the month of june 2020 for the benefit of the students and also from various uh, groups of pharma fraternity uh, on this brief half i professor mb nagarjuna head of the department of pharmaceutical regulatory affairs extends fps to humanitarian and fps you know the advocate of gundur city able administrator successful leader and more beloved chairman sangaraj garu for today's international webinar to this international webinar i cordially welcome our secretary and correspondent who is a 
well-known physician, visionary, insightful and inspiring person, Dr. S. this webinar. I extend my heartful gratitude to our honorary chairman, Dr. Manav Radha Krishnamurti Garu, who is a physician of Guntur City, philanthropist, and who has built this Hindu College of Pharmacy, brick by brick, and moreover, a member of the Pharmacy Council of India. I express my heartful gratitude to our honorary chairman on this occasion. I extend a ardent welcome to our principal, Dr. Govindarajan, principal, Dr. A. S. Vice Principal, Dr. A. Sunita Madam, PharmaD Director and OSD, Sri Sita Ramayagaru, and all other faculty members and HODs to this international webinar. And to all participants, I extend a cordial welcome. Rudra Dubey, PhD, MBA, a lead, Medical Writing and Medical Affairs, Iritech Pharma, Cambridge, University, uh, United States. Sari is a PhD in Biotechnology from uh, Punjab University and MSc Biotechnology from Benares Hindu University, MBA in Marketing and uh, Pharmaceutical Management from uh, Rutgers Business School, New Jersey, USA. Experienced professional offering a broad basics in multifunctional areas of biotechnology and pharmaceutical organizations focusing on R&D, medical affairs, regulatory affairs, and commercial activities. Dr. Rudra Dupe has done an excellent work in the area of East genetics as evidenced from his uh, uh, publications in some of the very prestigious journals. Completed his R&D project works that were aimed to discover biomarkers and identify new targets to develop molecular IEDs. Sir also offered his services for an emerging uh, biotechnology startup, uh, Explore. A fraternal welcome to all fellow faculty members and also who are playing a vital role in the growth of this temple of land. I offer a warm welcome to all nearest who are the pillars of this institution and I hope and request you uh, your benign cooperation throughout this program uh, for, for its success. I extend my hearty welcome to participants from India to cover their event. Once again, I welcome this August gathering for this webinar. And uh, now I request our uh, respected chairman, Sri Jupiter Rangaraj Garu, to address the gathering. Over to Sri Jupiter Rangaraj Garu. Hello, sir. Rangaraj Gar, pass on, yes, sir. Ah, why is it Ah, there program event. Naaku, we no Yes. Yes. Namaste. As per the Indian traditions and Bharatiya traditions, Namaskar is a samaskar. Namaskar makes everyone happy, so also the nature happy. The introduction of the speaker by Mr. Nagapushanam, I had just Gone back to my Akilabhata Vijayati Parishad days when I had an opportunity to go to Benares Hindu University for a couple of months where I stayed with my friend Mr. Gopal Reddy. By that time he was in MSc Physics. And uh, when I heard that the Honorable Speaker had first strength of education at Benares Hindu University. I felt that any person from Benares Hindu University 
he goes to higher pedestals of any of any hemisphere because that is called as pandit madan mohan malavya's blessings and the present topic which is taken up by our uh, our faculty and which is going to be delivered by the respectable member it is very much relevant as far as the present situation of pandemic is concerned and there is going to be a sea change in respect of the pharma education and also the pharmaceutical company in my view the biotechnology is going to take a more leap than any other transformation of education the other day i was just going to the new education policy which is going to be more streamlined and the new education policy i found that the present trend of education is going to have a sea change in all respect including the the professional courses and when i when i when i when i have seen the topic that is going to be delivered now the the relativity of the present change of biotechnology and its implementations with complementations is going to have a future upward layer only it's not a downward layer when it is an upward layer the present topic is very much relevant which inspires confidence not only the students and the persons who are viewing this uh, webinar i would just proudly say that our hindu college of pharmacy is established in 1999 and this society is established in 1860 from there from last more than 170 years our non profit organization society has been doing all the educational aspects without pocketing any amount from the society on the other hand we with the provisions in we have got in our committee chart accountants doctors advocates businessmen industrialists who part with with their time and especially our hindu college of pharmacy which is uh, which is one of the premier institutions of hindu college high school council he is doing he is doing what all that is required for the upliftment of education and our committee our board of directors in which my my honorable secretary mr dr basudhar rao and our faculty members have thrust upon us that we should do this webinar series get our get our children more with knowledge and also our responsibility to society is also to be established so in this connection our our faculty members are doing good service to the students and especially the subjects that they have taken for the webinar they are very marvelous and wonderful and today's subject is also one of a premier subject of which our faculty shivajyoti and jawhar babu who are heading that particular aspect they are they are doing also good service and we uh, that the present webinar would throw a good light for the future generations and the expertise of the speaker are going to be the genesis of this of this webinar which is going to be a premier webinar and uh, i i intend to take this and show the webinar even to the technology minister in the un government and also the other ministers 
that they would also know the amount of inputs the honorable speakers are giving for the society and for the benefit of education with this i i thank the the all the members and especially the honorable speaker who is going to do his human service by by picking up time and now it is a almost it is a uh, it is a good morning in usa and uh, for us it is going to become a sunset so with this i thank all the members and especially the speaker who who is doing a lot of service not only for himself but also to the entire globe and especially to the human mankind in this in this pandemic situation i with folded hands and with i i bow my head to the honorable speaker who has who is going to deliver a wonderful lecture by the by data which i have seen thank you very much thank you for giving me this opportunity thank you sir thank you sir for your benedictions and opening remarks i request uh, our principal sir dr r govindrajan garu to address over to dr r govindrajan garu good evening one and all on this august gathering we wish warm welcome for this international webinar series or organizing in our hindu college of pharmacy and because of hindu college of pharmacy we welcome you all once again all the participants and uh, speakers dr dubey sir for this uh, webinar this a uh, topic which is given uh, is a uh, very uh, giving the practical approach to the industry what they need because the global perspectives is uh, giving imparting knowledge to the present generation students to give the enormous growth of what they learn from the ug and pg degree so uh, in this uh, occasion uh, the students and uh, research scholars and faculty what is the need to learn from the industry that is one of the good opportunity sare so have enormous experience in the field of biotechnology and also in other uh, pharma sectors they giving uh, very valuable information which is need to to update the knowledge of our uh, uh, country but nowadays we are seeing that in present pandemic in situation our uh, industrial uh, opportunities are more but student chosen is a right path and right direction is a very difficulty so now this uh, 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 present the situation the right way to know about such uh, which way to selecting and which is the right uh, means to go for the industry to learn like this practical approach is a wonderful uh, opportunities sir is uh, giving a, a very uh, enormous uh, knowledge about particular uh, uh, development industries because our industry sectors are nowadays uh, completely is uh, automation uh, because you no know, to minimize the error so we want to meet that uh, uh, automation capacity students to learn not only the pharma uh, also to know about other sectors to like uh, uh, vigilance and also to know about the coding systems and, and also to know about the what is to do for computer uh, technologies it based so these are the additional qualifications are required to reach to uh, industry uh, uh, development now the present uh, situation so, uh, we want to drugs to for uh, treatment for the covid 19 because nowadays the people are seeking the good drugs good drugs leads to the drug discovery based on repurposing or maybe innovations so this is the company we are waiting for the good uh, drugs to make it to opportunity to learn various uh, 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 treatment of uh, covid 19 so i this platform i think so everybody if we make it to uh, bring to good enlightening the knowledge and also to how to uh, reach to the industry what the industry are developed what the industry needs from you so this is a one of the good platform i really uh, thank you for the given me the opportunity on behalf of our chairman sir shri jibaram rajgaru 
and uh, Dr. Masrun Rao, Secretary and Correspondent. I am well, warm welcome to one and all for this uh, international webinar series. Thank you, one and all, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. The convener, uh, Dr. Namushnum, and co convener, uh, Mrs. Chivajodi. Thank you. Thank you, sir, uh, Dr. Govindrajan Garu, for uh, your warm welcoming words to the participants and to the speaker on this uh, international webinar. Now, I request uh, uh, HOD of Pharmaceutical Analysis and moreover our Vice Principal, Professor A. Sunita Madam to address. Over to Dr. A. Sunita Madam. Yeah. Good evening, one and all. I feel privileged to extend a warm welcome to distinguished delegates, a very fine and pleasant morning to uh, today's uh, speaker, Dr. Dubey Garu and all the participants who came up with more enthusiasm. Firstly, I would like to thank to the speaker, Dr. Rudra Dubey, who have accepted our invitation and going to enlighten us on global perspectives on new developments in pharmaceutical industry. The, tip, the topic is really enthralling us. We must know about emerging trends in pharma industry that will shape the future for the next generation. We must know about how has technology changed the pharma industry. The new technologies such as uh, big data, artificial intelligence, 3D printing are revolutionizing the pharma industry. We all are aware of that, which can be used to customize everything from drug to prosthetics. Not only that, which are changing the way new drugs are developed also. Uh, I feel the new decade is bound to fuel some truly definitive trends in the pharmaceutical industry that will give rise to groundbreaking studies and equally riveting research avenues. So I hope it will be more useful to the upcoming pharmacists and researchers. I take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to the management of Hindu College of Pharmacy for providing such wonderful opportunities to all of us. I appreciate convener Dr. M. E. Nagabhushanongaru, co-convener Mrs. Shiva Jyoti and her team Dr. Jawhar Babu for their efforts to make this program in a successful manner. Thank you one and all for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Madam, for uh, enlightening us, all of us about the significance of today's webinar and your welcoming words. Now I request uh, uh, Sri Megaru, OSD and the Pharmacy Director uh, to address. Over to Sri Taramegaru. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nagapushnam. Uh, Welcome, sir. Well, good afternoon to all the viewers and respected our management members. Uh, our Chairman Sir Sri Jupur Rangaraj Garu and Secretary Sir Dr. Madhusudan Rao Garu, Honorary Chairman Dr. Manav Radha Krishnamurti Garu, Principal, Vice Principal and my dear other colleagues. Uh, I am very happy to address you on this occasion. And uh, first let me congratulate uh, Dr. Rudra Dubey for sparing his time to address our students. So as far as the Global perspectives are new and amazing um, developments are concerned. I would like to tell about uh, the developments which are taking place in Hyderabad. See, one of the uh, prime premier institutes that are manufacturing vaccines, they have come in Hyderabad. First one is Santhabiotics. Once upon a time, the hepatitis vaccine was costing 1,000 rupees a while. Hepatitis B vaccine. Now the price has uh, come, to come to 10 rupees for a vaccine. And not only that, they are also supplying to all the countries as per the approval given by the World Health Organization. Similarly, there is another Bharat Biotics. They are also manufacturing a lot of vaccines. And um, in the Bengal, there is Bengal immunity. They are supplying. For example, TT vaccine, TT serums, less than one rupee. So 
and biocon has come biocon in addition to other various pharmaceuticals they have succeeded in um, manufacturing insulins especially the human human insulins the it is the first company not only to supply an indian requirements but also entered the japan first indian company to supply human insulins in japan so the these are some of the um, global perspectives that are going to enhance the image of india and our prestige in the world and slowly in the future some more companies will come and they will also uh, you must be knowing there are 30 companies which are uh, trying to manufacture uh, covid vaccine among them there are 10 companies which are trying in india if they are success definitely it will bring a credit to our country uh, for the treatment of vaccine and in the same way the indian sector also the public sector also there are some companies which are marketing vaccines and stira among them is central institute of kasoli which is there in himachal pradesh they are making lot of vaccine stira anti rabies vaccine anti snake venoms like that and medical equipment this is another field where so many companies have come uh, to manufacture various medical equipment and um, surgicals and uh, surgical instruments also like starting from thermometers to the uh, various uh, sophisticated equipments our country is going to manufacture so definitely this is a very good development in the global perspectives and i wish uh, in future our companies will compete and uh, will be uh, having good name and fame in the world now that the china companies are having some problem this is the best opportunity for our country manufacturers to enhance their productions to improve the quality and get number one position in the export of various drugs and pharmaceuticals and vaccines and medical equipment so i wish all our uh, young pharmacists who are listening to this lecture uh, they will have bright future this is a golden future for our young pharmacists and related professionals thank you sir thank you very much and we welcome you on this occasion for addressing yeah. our students thank, thank you, you sitaram garu uh, for addressing and uh, giving a overview of uh, the role of indian pharma industry uh, playing vital role uh, in the world for in the supply of surgicals medical devices and uh, also trying their level best in uh, uh, coming out with a uh, covid vaccine for the treatment uh, for the present pandemic situation thank you sir and now i request uh, sri ss prasad madhiraju garu to address the gathering over to prasad madhiraju garu శ్రీధర్ గారు హలో శ్రీధర్ గారు మాధిరాజు సార్ ప్రసాద్ సార్ అవైలబుల్ ఓకే దెన్ ఐ నౌ ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ టుడేస్ స్పీకర్ డాక్టర్ రుద్రా దుబే లీడ్ మెడికల్ రైటింగ్ అండ్ మెడికల్ అఫైర్స్ టు బి ఇంట్రడ్యూస్డ్ బై అవర్ కో కన్వీనర్ మిసెస్ శివజ్యోతి Department of Biotechnology, Hindu College of Pharmacy. Over to Shiva Jyoti, Madam. Sridhar, sir. Sridhar, sir, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you are audible, Madam. Please come. Sir, uh, Please share content. Share the screen. Yeah, yeah, okay. Good evening to one and all. Myself, Mrs. Sivajyoti Jonna, Head of Biotechnology Department. On behalf of Hindu College of Pharmacy, Chairman Sir, Sri Jukudi Rangarajugaru, our Secretary and Correspondent Sir, Sri Marsun Ravgaru, 
teaching faculty participants of today's webinar i feel that it is an immense pleasure to welcome and introduce dr rudra dubey garu who is presently working as lead medical writing and medical affairs heritage pharma and rajas business school new jersey usa we welcome you sir today we are very fortunate to have a wonderful speaker like dr rudra dubey garu dr rudra dubey garu is an intellectual and versatile personality in the field of biotechnology he is an intellectual person in respect of his research experience sir has completed his bachelor of science from ranchi university and master of science in biotechnology from banaras hindu university he has completed his master of business administration in marketing management from rajya university sir was awarded with phd in biotechnology from punjab university apart from his studies sir is a member of pharmaceutical management club rajya's business school sir is also a member of rajya's association of marketing and strategy club rajya's business school he worked as a senior research fellow at institute of microbial technology from the year 1995 to 2000 sir also worked as a senior research fellow in a discovery research project which was aimed to study epigenetic regulation of establishment of silent heterochromatin structure in fission of yeast at council of scientific and industrial research from 1998 to 2000 he has post doctoral experience in a research project which was funded by nih and discovered a novel genomic component that is critical for chromatin cohesion in a specialized region of chromosome at umd new jersey from 2000 to 2003 sir acted as a senior research scientist at university of medicine and dentistry of new jersey from 2003 to 2008 sir worked as a research and product development manager at cell explore new jersey from 2008 to 2009 he handled a prestigious r&d project to discover biomarkers identify new targets and develop molecular ivds Sir also worked as a senior consultant R&D and clinical development strategy from 2010 to 2014. He worked as an assistant research professor at Rajya University New Jersey from 2010 to 2014. Sir is a president for consultancy in regulatory and medical affairs at Antogens Biopharma Consulting New Jersey USA since 2014. Sir acted as a lead medical affairs and regulatory medical writing at virid bio solutions and tiva pharmaceuticals from 2016 to 2018 currently sar is working as a lead medical writing and medical affairs heritage pharma new jersey usa since 2018 sar has vast experience in molecular genetics drug development system monitoring licensing marketing and process improvement Sir has published his research work in various well-reputed peer-reviewed journals. Briefly, Sir is an expert professional offering broad-based experience in multifunctional areas of biotechnology and pharmaceutical organizations focusing R&D, medical affairs, regulatory affairs, and commercial. Sir's vast experience may definitely enlighten us on today's topic. i thank to the management principal sir and today's convener dr mv nagbhushan garu for giving me this words this wonderful opportunity for me thank you sir nagbhushan sir over to convener sir thank you madam uh, for uh, giving a, a good introduction about uh, today's uh, speaker dr uh, rudra dubey garu oh, i request uh, uh, sir to proceed to give his uh, uh, benedictions and uh, bless us uh, through this uh, uh, global perspectives on uh, new and emerging developments in pharmaceutical industry uh, sir from the management of uh, hindu college of pharmacy from the faculty from the students and also from all the participants uh, we humbly request you and welcome you to this uh, webinar session sir uh, i request uh, dr uh, rudra dubey garu uh, to proceed over to dr rudra dubey gar thank you very much uh, dr nagabhushan uh, welcome sir uh, i am humble uh, with 
kind words and um, introductory remark uh, regarding my background. And it's a real, real pleasure to um, be part of uh, this uh, webinar. And uh, I'm looking forward to sharing some of the view views I have. And I'm, I'm sure uh, uh, the esteemed members of uh, the college, Hindu college, as well as uh, students, they must be aware, but I would be just scintillating through a few views, which would provoke some thoughts. And uh, that thoughts would lead them to um, an excellent path uh, in order to um, address the challenges the world is going through. And uh, especially given the COVID situation, uh, the pharmaceuticals uh, uh, in, the, in the whole sector is going to play a big role in healthcare. And uh, that makes this uh, webinar uh, ever relevant. And I uh, thank um, uh, Dr. Shankar Prasad for uh, giving me this opportunity and connecting with uh, the STEAM um, faculty members and the department and the college. And uh, uh, it was great hearing uh, um, Mr. Uh, uh, Rangaraju and um, uh, Gov the, Dr. Govindarajan, Dr. Sunita, and uh, Dr. Um, uh, Sudhir Ramaya. Um, it, it's, a, it's a pleasure to uh, hear uh, how they are uh, helping students and faculty to orient towards the great prospect of uh, pharma industry. So um, may I request to get a um, video and I would like to share my screen to present for the yes, presentation. Sir. Yes, reader. Uh, sir, yeah. Yes. So, um, yes, just sir. Trying to get feedback. Um, is my screen uh, visible? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Visible, sir. Sir, excuse, sir. Please, screen sir. visible, sir. Sir, you, okay. can you Excellent. please disable the participant annotation option, sir? It is in the more options, sir. Um, I heard more someone options, saying sir. something I wasn't able to hear, so. Uh, is there a need to do anything before I start? Yeah, okay. just only to. Sir, please disable uh, participants' annotation, sir. Okay. Uh, shall I start? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, yeah, so again, uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, presenting my views. And uh, just on the outset, I would like to mentioned that these are just few things which I'm sure you are aware of, but I have put together uh, these views so that um, we could start thinking after uh, uh, going out from the room uh, hearing this uh, webinar. And- uh, um, Excuse uh, me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Sir. Sir, sir in the more option. Hello. Yes. Beside the sales screen option, if there is a more option, is there is a more option? Okay. You please click on that. And uh, in in the more option, what I need to do? Disable participant annotation, sir. Okay. Disable participant annotation. Just a second. Yes, I did that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Sorry Thanks. for me being a little bit technologically challenged. I don't do quite often uh, the webinars. Thank you for helping though. Thank so, you, sir. Uh, just checking again, uh, is my screen viewable? Yes, sir. Yes, sir Thank you. Sir. So, uh, yeah, so I, I would try to do, uh, to uh, give a little bit of uh, overview of industry and uh, painting, uh, a picture, a wider picture about the landscape. And then um, uh, how is it is uh, in bigger economy? And I would be focusing on US for two reasons. One is because it's a major player. And the second one is my knowledge set is mostly uh, derived from the US pharmaceutical uh, industry. And then I would touch upon uh, the Indian setup 
and I have uh, limited knowledge and I'm sure the team uh, audience would know more than I would, but just I would put that few things from just to put the perspective. And the key part that I would like to uh, emphasize on new challenges and new changes and leave the whole all audience with the uh, thinking and question that what we can do next. So towards the landscape, uh, we all know the pharmaceutical industry is a, just a component of whole healthcare system. And medical, it, it includes in addition to pharmaceuticals, we have medical devices, insurance companies, uh, life sciences, manufacturing providers, health facilities, technology, uh, and all. But the key point is what we serve. We serve medicines and that take care of um, health related issues or well being. And it runs on the expenditure as well as uh, the funding. And we should not forget about this link. This is most important part that guides us where the world is heading. And I would like to uh, just request the uh, students specifically that it is very important for a uh, student to know what's going around uh, in, in the country as well as globally. And that's the key idea of my talk today to expose you uh, how the industry is built and how it's shaping and what would be next so that you could prepare yourself uh, while you're learning, you're also preparing yourself for the industry. And the reason is this, that the whole ecosystem for any industry, uh, for say um, uh, healthcare or pharmaceuticals, you have three major components. One is, and that's the most important, academia. They, that creates knowledge and people with knowledge. And that starts uh, innovation and also working and helping the industry and sector grow. And that therefore uh, academic institutions have to play a very important role. And in, in addition to that, you have uh, industry players like pharmaceutical companies, uh, healthcare uh, companies and government. And we heard right in the beginning that how government of Andhra Pradesh and India is helping this industry to build. And it's very important. So uh, healthcare, where pharmaceuticals and bio, 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 biotechnology industry sits in, provides healthcare products and services, and it deals with the expenditure, healthcare expenditure. So we have to connect these to go together. So what is happening uh, in, uh, across the world? We know this map, just I'm touching upon the, on this to emphasize that USA and Europe they are the major players and Japan is the next. So um, the, wherever uh, the demand is, that's where the industry uh, focuses and their demand and their need, uh, that's where they try to supply for. So we cannot forget this. And that's why it's one of the driving uh, force that how we start to shape our thinking that how we would be preparing, learning and preparing ourselves uh, for the industry. So uh, we need to know where are the dollars, where are the euros, and they are actually guiding us that how industry is shaping. It's not that it's shaping our thought process. It's that how industry is shaping and we would be preparing for that. So uh, US, EU and Japan are the biggest consumers of pharmaceutical products and rest of the world, uh, they're there, but uh, how much do we care? We do care a lot. If we uh, play well in big economies, we would be in a position to support uh, the rest of the world, which is very important and we should do it. So uh, very quickly, uh, I would uh, mention that the function um, like uh, any other, uh, the pharmaceutical industry has R&D and I mentioned academia play a big role in it. And then um, the industry play major role in raw product 
uh, acquisition uh, or, or pre preparation and finished good and manufacturing and supply and then marketing happens and then uh, the world gets the product and services. Most important part and that, that I saw that this uh, uh, regulatory department of Hindu College Law is uh, hosting this event and uh, since it impacts the human life and therefore it is highly regulated and we need to know the re regulatory um, aspect as well as the policy uh, policies uh, that shape the regulatory um, uh, aspects of the industry. And it is uh, capital in intensive and therefore we need to know that as well. So uh, as I mentioned, we have R&D, manufacturing and uh, marketing and what all these equate to. It equates to uh, products and services for healthcare. Uh, that means consumption and expenditure. So money is important piece, but we have to know that how we have to direct ourselves, which is guiding, guiding innovation and uh, the, the problem solving. So uh, these guides, how the R&D will happen, how manufacturing will happen, how the product would be supplied to uh, end users. So uh, I'm just uh, hopping to the setup in US how it is, it is similar uh, here as well. But the key aspect to know is, is a, a big setup. And uh, the total spending in US is uh, now touching $500 billion. So that means that much of demand is there. And now the world is global. Therefore, you have opportunity, you can play. If you have product, you can play and I would show you that India has a strength and India can play very strongly in this space. And um, the, the India the provide uh, mostly generic, but it can play in branded drug space as well, which is 78.7%. And that's where the real opportunities are. And that's where we need to think how we would be turning over towards uh, the branded uh, drug uh, development and uh, production manufacturing and supply. And um, it is uh, to mention that the, even the, in US, uh, manufacturing of drug is very strong. It is uh, of $217 billion to touching $220 billion today. So it's a big space and US is an open market and therefore uh, India can play a big role and it, ha it has played and it has built a very big reputation. I'll show you quickly uh, in later part of my uh, talk. So we have to focus, start from here, manufacturing space, but go uh, beyond this space to branded drug products. And uh, academic uh, uh, background and innovation would help uh, reaching there. So the next I'm going to talk about uh, why US is so ahead in the whole world. Uh, so it, is, it has one third of market of biopharmaceuticals that we all know, but why? The reason is uh, it, it has excellent R&D facility. It leads the world in terms of R&D uh, because it spends $75 billion. And um, it has got strong academic base, which uh, creates two things I mentioned, uh, the skilled um, people, who bring innovation. And most importantly, the academic institution, they create IP. And IP is the thing that uh, gives you um, the, the tangible thing that you could commercialize and uh, gain revenue and you could feed back to your R&D. And what are the drivers then? And I mentioned the, the key Players in the ecosystem are very important. Government uh, research funding is very important. It's very strong in US and India is coming up as well. So uh, it helps in getting uh, good research and IP, securing IP. And once you have IP, uh, it tells the potential of commercialization and it, it draws a capital market. And if the capital market in US is very strong. And that's another very strong component of the ecosystem that India need to build. Um, without that innovation cannot see the day of light. Uh, it has got most rigorous regulatory 
Affair System, FDA, we have heard about it. And most important piece of the FDA is, it's not just the, the standalone regulatory affairs, it's a very hands-on uh, faculty. It helps academia and industry uh, to uh, bring product uh, into the market by approval. So they partner, not, they just not scrutinize drug and application. They partner right from the beginning when you start to develop drug. And that uh, actually catalyzes uh, in success of uh, drug development. And they help uh, industry to bring the product into the market. They help to ensure that those products are successful, bringing benefit to the, um, the uh, patients. And uh, that's very important because now the world is changing towards the outcome-based, evidence-based and value-based um, industry. So uh, it, it, in addition to that, uh, US uh, pharmaceutical industry creates 4.7 million uh, jobs and it is going to create more. Uh, you will see that, that new drivers are there. And um, of course, it's contributing to $1.3 trillion, trillion dollar economy output. And I don't have to like uh, read this, uh, the, uh, the pharmaceutical business and supplies playing a role. Uh, so uh, the R&D, which I mentioned, is the one of the driver. Uh, as you see how it's growing in terms of uh, uh, billions of dollars invested in it. And uh, uh, 70.9 billion dollars in R&D spend, it, it tells the story. Why uh, the pharmaceutical industry is so robust in, in, in US. And um, spending in R&D uh, percentage is 20 percent, close to 20 percent. Uh, so uh, it, it is a big percentage of what pharmaceutical industry earns goes back in R&D. And that's why they have so strong R&D. And this is the most important piece that any country uh, thinking about uh, boosting its uh, pharmaceutical biotech healthcare sector, they have to consider. So, um, uh, why it's leader? Uh, it's 28% captures in, in, uh, in the world, I'm sorry. Um, and other part comes from um, the EU. I would not be discussing on EU be, uh, because I wanna keep focus on one thing at a time so that we just get the, the a sense. Uh, the EU would be just adding uh, uh, cumulatively onto those information uh, wouldn't add anything new. So I would be just uh, keeping uh, limited to um, US. US, uh, we think that China and, and India are the leader in uh, API and generic drug production, but US is far ahead. And um, again, the reason is R&D. They focus on uh, all R&D, which supports the pharmaceutical industry and API is uh, very important and they are very committed to increase their API production and they lead the world. So what is happening uh, in, in the that, that space? So uh, as I mentioned, innovation is the key engine that der drives uh, R&D and its, its prospect. And, uh, as we know that we uh, depend on batch manufacturing process, which takes months, uh, which is uh, the bottom part of the, the, this panel. I'm not going to discuss and describe all these pieces, but region one and region two, they are uh, silos happen in isolation and takes time. So the top of the bottom, uh, uh, the top part of the panel is uh, showing that how they resolve this converted from months to day days by converting into continuous manufacturing process. So the po main point I'm making here is that innovation they solve they want to speed up and increase the efficiency. So they have gotten the day uh, versus months. And this is the most important thing that innovation is the driving engine for R&D and US is very ahead of that. And I'm going to emphasize on that. Uh, the academia is, uh, plays the biggest role. All those research publication, th th that has resulted into this picture that we are seeing. And that's 
the important role pharmacy, Hindu pharmacy college and students and faculty can play uh, together. Other piece that has revolutionized and I, we heard uh, in, in, in the introduction is uh, process technology and it's a hot milk uh, extrusion, HME we know. And this is this image, I'm not going to describe what it ha uh, how it does, but the key point that I'm going to emphasize on, it, it speeds up, it, it's the innovation that uh, is telling us that uh, we are not going to do the same thing again and again, we are going to improve process, we are going to innovate so that we have a better processes and we can speed up and we can increase the quality of the product. So other one is has come and we heard uh, from vice principal is 3D printing. So uh, 3D printing is has revolutionized uh, the pharma sector and it has revolutionized so much that you have we have policy in the U.S. that and there is a uh, industry guidance from FDA that how you would be using the 3D. Uh, printing in pharmaceutical industry so that um, the, the drug shortage that the country is facing due to COVID and all lockdowns uh, can be met. And this enables the pharmaceutical manufacturers to uh, solve lots of problems uh, and speed up uh, so that the products are produced pretty fast and uh, it could be um, uh, the, the produced with uh, lots of feedback, how it needed to be done, like personal, personalized basis and all. And therefore, um, it's going in this way that diagnostic, diagnosis happens, then uh, it goes into the system uh, where, which designs your drug and then printing prints a drug. And it is printed based on the genetic makeup or personalized need of the patient. And personalized medicine that we know that it's uh, today's thing and future tomorrow's thing. And this is what is happening. And it's essentially uh, boosting the graph of uh, uh, industry uh, because you are uh, filling in the gaps that we have uh, in terms of we are not uh, producing medicine which is giving value to all. So we are having one size fit all. Uh, that is not going to work uh, in terms of growth. So the most innovative R&D is very important. And they, I just touched upon two, three things which is happening and there are many innovation happening. So innovation is the key uh, driving engine for uh, industry and designing and printing is uh, now a norm in US. So uh, I'm uh, going to uh, describe a little bit of uh, set up in India and uh, the, uh, right on the onset, I would mention that I would just uh, touch on just for, for the sake of building the perspective and I'm aware uh, everybody there in, in, in audience, they know more than I do. So again, uh, the R&D uh, helps uh, how the drug would be developed and manufactured and it gets into the mar market and company markets and pharma runs that. that. So the R&D is a, still a question in India. It's not a uh, like a being critic, but it's feedback that we have to know. And India has got tremendous strength because all those uh, research scholars who come in US, they are actually shipping the R&D in US. So there is no reason why India should not be able to reach to that potential. Other piece is uh, the pharma industry. It's again, not criticism, it's just the observation that we are in, in a race of uh, manufacturing drug and increasing the number. What, and it's dry, driven by this fact that the profit for manufacturing without much of innovation is based on the volume. So the volume we increase, more we earn. And that's the only key principle working in the industry, we have to change. We have to uh, be smiling in R&D and we should be changing this trend based on not the same drug 
just trying to increase the manufacturing. More drugs, more innovative products. That's what we need to do. So quickly, these numbers, uh, we all know, just I put for the sake of discussion, um, that um, healthcare market is most important. That's where the pharmaceutical industry sets in. It's a $372 billion. And in, in a recent um, uh, conference organized by USBIC uh, that in, invited prime minister to speak, and he spoke that healthcare industry in India is growing uh, above 20%, which is a very strong growth. And that means that it has got a great potential and lots of investment and new policies are shaping this healthcare and therefore it's supporting all components, including pharmaceutical industry. So uh, the share of generic drug is major, uh, that is 70%. And therefore um, the focus is still in the, the generic drug, but I emphasize that India has a potential to uh, be leader in branded products as well. R&D and innovation and academia can play a big role. So uh, value of uh, Indian pharma export is $9 billion uh, INR. And we just saw that US alone has over uh, $250 billion uh, market. So uh, we have a lot of scope going from $19 billion to that, that to uh, grab the bigger pie in, in, in the global market. So we have to think uh, changing our strategy and it has to start from academia. And uh, we heard uh, right in the beginning that the new education power policy has, ha has come in and we have to start taking advantage of those and shaping uh, the, the, the new um, the, the fresh brain to orient themselves so that they can innovate and uh, think globally. So these uh, graphs are uh, just borrowed to give another point that how much we are spending in, in R&D. And um, um, we see that uh, the R&D investment in, in uh, India grew, um, but it's now uh, getting to plateau. And I'm sorry. Um, and also uh, the investment by pharma company is also going down. And this is a big concern. This has to come up. And since economy is not doing great, so we don't expect just the industry would be able to push this up. The government will have to uh, pitch in. And that's what is happening in US. US industry is uh, under tremendous pressure and government has come up with a lots of uh, incentives and um, packages to support the industry. And uh, the, the graph would pretty soon pick up and that should, that should happen in India as well. So pharmaceutical export from India, uh, the bot bottom image uh, pie chart, you can see the North America is leading. And that uh, is one thing that we have to keep focus where are the markets and that we should align our strategies based on that. And uh, export is declining. So it's a concern. So we cannot just keep doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, that won't help us picking this bar, which is going down. Uh, we have to think, go and analyze and come up with the new uh, ideas and strategies to boost this up. And that's where the major think tank, they need to um, get involved and think and academia definitely is going to play a role because uh, they are aware of a lot of information that can, that can go into think tanks. So um, uh, just quickly to uh, touch on that R&D spends less than 10% of its revenue and we saw about 20% in US. So we have like half of Ajmai's U.S. has spent in R&D, and therefore we have to increase that. Export is uh, $15 billion in 2019. That has to go across $100 billion or over, over that. And uh, it's mostly generic market, but we have to um, 
position ourselves for the branded products as well and how it can happen innovation of course and uh, we learned how innovative us and other uh, the other uh, countries in in globally are and therefore india has to focus on beyond a generic product um, and they should think how they can bring a new chemical entity and see that we can say uh, in the pipeline and more of those and that will have strengthen the pharmaceutical industry in in india and position india uh, into bigger arena so uh, this is a diagram uh, i apologize for a small font but i would like to just emphasize uh, not uh, discuss more on this that it the pharmaceuticals in india uh, is focusing on uh, focused on uh, active uh, pharmaceutical in ingredients, API. Uh, I would be speaking over and over again on APIs and the formulation. But this is uh, not what uh, uh, describes the, um, the potential India has. India ha has a ha highest number of PhDs and educated um, skill uh, mass. And therefore it can easily go beyond these and add to the healthcare and pharmaceutical industry. So um, generic drugs are co copies of innovative pharmaceuticals. So why not innovative pharmaceuticals? Uh, why just a copy? India has all potential to do that. And that's where uh, thought process should be going. And that's where the bigger opportunities are. So um, the um, active ingredients, uh, we know that uh, it's a copy, so it goes with the same doses, same routes, or, or maybe a little bit variation in its strength doses and uh, the route of administration. And uh, we depend on when patent would expire so that we can produce these, manufacture these, and there uh, is a low margin, um, high volume uh, gameplay and uh, the low um, barrier of entry. So lots of competition. So you have to compete uh, and just, uh, be a highest manufacturer uh, and uh, the, the India is not uh, the, the, the far, far behind. It's leading in terms of manufacturing, but why not the innovative products? So um, we have to go beyond just selling the high volume uh, uh, in order to earn profit, but innovative product, which has the higher, higher margin. And uh, uh, India has got a great reputation. So these two, it's, came side by side. Uh, the President of United States uh, applauded how India has uh, stood to the occasion and provided hydroxychloroquine. So when President of United States uh, tells anything, uh, the whole world hears. And um, the, um, how India supplied uh, within a matter of weeks, uh, the hydroxychloroquine when uh, there were no um, drug which uh, the whole world can depend on. So it, it, it's a great uh, geopolitical mileage that India got. And we have great reputation. We, we, we have established ourselves in the manufacturing, but we need to go beyond that. So uh, we have to take the glory uh, ahead of uh, these reputation. So uh, we know that the wor world is in a challenging time and uh, uh, COVID, uh, <laughs> we are all facing issues. And I saw uh, some of our uh, speaker and audience with masks. So it has changed. Uh, we, are, we, have, we have a new behavior uh, in ourselves. So why not in, in this industry? So we have to have a new behavior for the industry and to meet with the challenges of new normal. And we can do that. Uh, the, so how we can do that is we have to uh, recover. And uh, in order to do that, we need to respond. And if we start responding strongly, we will thrive. And this is the mantra, uh, what uh, has propped the biopharma uh, in the US and everywhere. So India has to do the same thing and it's doing it. And this um, webinar is an evidence of that. So America's Supply Chain um, National Security Act. So this is a big deal. The, this is how 
quickly uh, the policymakers have sprung to the uh, challenges and coping up with this. So they have uh, supply chain national security act so that they can ensure the shortage of drug. So they know that supply is uh, dependent on many countries and it's uh, disrupted. So build that, that up. And it can ha only happen when government start to play a role in building uh, policies and supporting all those uh, uh, acts. So the next one is Corona Virus Aid Relief Economic Security Act. So a lot of packages, a lot of policies. Now industry will have to uh, play uh, with the new rules uh, so that um, it can support the industry uh, to stay um, at the forefront. And uh, this tells us that uh, in India also, we need to get a lot of support from government. Uh, uh, I apologize for this busy uh, slide, a lot of <laughs> uh, words here, but the key point is um, manufacturers now, they have to disclose to FDA, regulatory agencies, that where are their manufacturing sites, where, who are the CMO, what are the sources of FDA. That means it's going to impact India as well. Uh, and if they don't approve, uh, nothing can happen. So we, our strategy should be uh, aligned to these uh, new guidelines that that is coming up and some of them have already been implemented. Manufacturers, um, they have to uh, have a contingency plan to have enough of supplies. So uh, if their supply chain, you're not fitting in, uh, you're not going to get in. So you have to know uh, how they are establishing their contingency plan how you, you can align. Then government uh, is providing incentive and which is most important uh, piece that is catalyzing uh, the bounce back. The Department of Health uh, and Human Services, HHS, which is the overarching um, body, which takes care of whole healthcare and um, Department of Homeland Security has combined hands. So they're not just taking that pharmaceutical industry is uh, serving healthcare. Now they are considering healthcare product and services could be used as a weapon against a country because country is vulnerable. The, the country was depending on uh, supply from other countries and they can stop the supply and they can choke their, their healthcare. So it could be used as a weapon. So see how ahead they're thinking and how their policy is uh, not just limited to one small uh, perspective. Uh, the perspective is like national, everything. So holistic approach, 360 degree view. And uh, th this is a great example. So India will have to think from that perspective as well. And as I mentioned that FDA uh, has been asking to publish quality rating, uh, 503B outsourcing facilities. These would impact India's all those manufacturing facilities. So we need to be aware of that, what is happening here. If we are not aware of that, uh, the, the manufacturing um, the pieces of pharmaceutical industry in well, India will get impacted. So these are the key changes happening in the US. So uh, what is happening in India? Uh, great word we heard and it's the most important thing and it's very encouraging, Atmanirbar. We have to be Atmanirbar and we heard how US, US is going towards it. So we are, we are doing the same thing. And COVID-19, it needs to do a few things to do Atmanirbar and India is not beh far behind. So we know that uh, we import 70% of API from China. That means uh, the same thing we have to do what US is doing. And our dependence is much larger, 70%. So API um, shortage would be big disaster. Uh, not just for the industry, it would spell disaster in the healthcare. We won't be having drug to uh, serve patients, which would be a um, very um, difficult situation to handle. So go government uh, is collecting ideas to counter drug shortage. And um, it has invited 700 API manufacturers to provide uh, insights how um, they can uh, build their capability to reduce the, uh, the API dependence on China or any other country and become up neighbor. So producers of raw materials like intermediary or key starting uh, ingredients or material, KSM we say, um, are the key focus. And 
uh, India has formed production linked in incentive uh, scheme, uh, which is uh, worth of 1.3 billion dollars. Uh, uh, you can convert into INR. Uh, it's a big sum. Uh, probably it will go uh, to uh, above 10,000 uh, crores. And uh, out of that, it would be going to uh, mainly API. And uh, as I said, we don't have to just limit to API. We have to think a little bit ahead uh, how the whole world is shaping because we cannot work into isolation and this industry is not working onto the isolation. Uh, we have uh, demand, that's where the industry is uh, focusing on. So we have to think how to connect these activities towards that. So uh, what is happening into um, the whole world uh, is, is very challenging. Just read the headlines of these news. Uh, pharma panics and they push back to bring drug manufacturing back to US. The pharmaceutical manufacturing back to US. It's time to rebuild domestic drug production in the US, both health and economic region. HHS, health, the most uh, powerful agency in US in healthcare. Uh, it partners with industry as well as Homeland Security, as I mentioned, to uh, build the um, pharmaceutical manufacturing uh, response think tank and response task force, and they're acting on it. So these bodies are very important. They're working in a very important uh, space, and it is going to impact how pharmaceutical industry is uh, positioned in India. Doesn't it ring an alarm? It does. So we have to be aware of what's happening in global arena because uh, anything that we are doing is uh, the major piece is demand, global demand. So um, what is new in the healthcare system? So we need to know. Uh, and uh, the right panel, it shows now healthcare system has changed. Uh, it's data oriented, it's information oriented. It's not like, okay, you have paracetamol throw in and if it alleviates pain of a cancer, cancer patient, we say, oh, we are in a cancer space and we are helping cancer patients. So it's not going to work that way. Um, so what is happening? All data of uh, the clinic uh, is going to a uh, lot of uh, big data, data analytics and artificial intelligence we heard from uh, <laughs> this morning. And this is happening in the US. Uh, so it's no more just a prescription. You need to know more information, more specific information. No more one size fit all. It has to be patient specific. Patient specific data will uh, dictate how the prescription would be written. So it is outcome-based, performance-based, like how medicine is performing, how clinical facilities are performing, and how the health benefit value it's bringing. So this is how the industry has shaped. And if your product is not aligned to these directives, it's not going to fit into the main play. And that's the main lesson learned uh, for us. So, um, now, uh, what we need to know, the disease diagnosis is rap rapidly changing. So new in vitro diagnostics, molecular diagnostics, and the data-driven uh, applications, they are uh, changing the shape. And once diagnosis happens, then uh, it's not stopping there. The precision uh, in, in prescription needed to be done, and also, uh, the product should be also focusing on curative therapy. Therapy. It's not just uh, treating the symptom anymore or, or uh, just alleviating few pieces in, in the disease. You have to cure the therapy and you have to show that it's curing. Then uh, how it, it is done is digitalization in therapeutics and uh, therefore all R&D in pharma and biotech uh, in US and Europe, uh, they are being impacted by new models. So they are internalizing lots of digitalization, IT, AI, real world evidence, RWE uh, are big term and they are shaping their strategies based on that and we have to know about it. So the, the whole uh, picture of uh, traditional biopharma uh, have new components, prevention, uh, 
how to have a digital therapeutics, how to have a precision in, in uh, prescription or intervention, then cure. You have to show that it's close to cure. Uh, and then uh, customized treatment that uh, one sets up patient population would need uh, one kind of drug, uh, the other kind of drug won't be effective. So you have to uh, have that kind of patient population described in your level of a drug. So um, digitalization means lots of uh, instrument the patient and the consumer are using, uh, even the provider are using, and um, lots of uh, social media is uh, gathering lots of information. It's all these are fitting into the R&D eventually. So uh, big data, data analytics is the, one of the uh, fulcrum that is going to shift uh, the whole focus, how the R&D would be shaping in pharmaceutical industry. So this is a complex picture. I don't uh, want you to get lost into it. Just the key big, big pieces, the drug makers, how they are playing patient and uh, radiologists, physician, researchers, and CRO in laboratory and drug manufacturer. And in the center, you have AI, artificial intelligence. So data, data is coming in and lots of insight is going back to them. And it's a like bi-directional data insight and information flow that is shaping the whole healthcare. So uh, again, India has a strength in IT. So why we should be falling behind. So lots of in, in initiative needed to be taken up in this space to fill in the gaps. Uh, between R&D and insight. So the R&D would be, um, if yeah, R&D is supplemented with uh, big data analytics, AI, real world evidence, India would be leading uh, in, in uh, pharmaceutical space. So um, the question is, and th this is the one of the, another question I'm going to leave you with to think, uh, is your intelligence up and running? So most important thing is to, stay tuned to what is happening in the global arena and um, come up with your strategies. So uh, with that, I just want to touch on uh, data and uh, big data uh, analytics and artificial intelligence. And AI is, uh, uh, is uh, going to help in real world evidence. Real world evidence is the thing that gives you insight that how uh, pharmaceutical product and services helping patient. So the evidences, scientific evidences, data-driven evidences, and of course, data-driven evidences would be done by our big data analytics and artificial intelligence would help. So uh, the, the money expenditure is going from payers like government in through health insurance policies or uh, private health insurance policies who, who pick up the bill of your of uh, uh, pharmaceutical products or services uh, to providers, then health economists, the clinicians and medical doctors, pharmacy benefit with the pharmacy that serves the medicines and a formulary uh, committee, uh, this is in US that decides which drug would be uh, covered. So all these are, uh, I apologize for the bad image here, but you can see the graphs and pie charts and all. Everything is happening in the background on the computer, a lot of data in US is happening. So this piece need to be built up. And if we are innovative in this, we would be leader in this. And there is no reason why India should not be able to do it because India has the biggest uh, pool repository of data, health, healthcare data and uh, IT strength and uh, the diversity uh, in, in terms of diseases and um, uh, the treatment uh, and the educational institutions uh, churning out lots of information. So combining all, uh, India could uh, innovate lots of uh, new uh, products and services in uh, artificial intelligence driven real world evidence that will shape the R&D. So uh, pharmaceutical product and development, this is the typical uh, pieces, uh, research happens. Uh, in laboratory up until the animals, and then it is developed in human. We know that the, uh, lots of uh, uh, dr drugs are repurposed for COVID and um, uh, also the vaccines are developed. They're in, in this development stage, uh, but the, this is fed by the research. So the, this is where the academia play a big role. 
And the commercialization happens. We heard uh, a day or two before that um, the uh, the first vaccine that would be produced in India, it would be uh, priced uh, for $2, uh, maybe 150 to 250 rupees. So uh, th this is driven by whole, whole chain is driven, value chain is driven by uh, the, the need, demand and what is happening in the world. So the right side, you see the same picture, but a lot of things is happening on the left side. And it's all, uh, I would not uh, the, like uh, let you get lost into these details, just uh, put the key point. All is information, data, analytics, and IBM, which is the biggest uh, in, in uh, the computation and consultancy. Uh, they have Watson Health AI, and they are churning all this information and fitting into this. This is happening. This is nothing new. So. Are we there? Can we have uh, left-hand side uh, innovation happen so that other innovation can, can uh, be propelled on the right-hand side? And this, this is where uh, the world is standing. And India has a lot of potential to do that. So uh, my another um, food for thought is pharmaceutical development is now more than just chemistry, it's data information, analytics, and those should be driving your innovation. And this is the key message I would like to leave you with uh, to go back and think and align your uh, future plans. With that, I thank you, um, the organizer, whole committee, and I'm uh, humbled <laughs> by uh, their kind uh, words and uh, it, it was, uh, Excellent pleasure to interact with uh, Dr. Um, Shankar Prasad uh, and uh, uh, all esteemed faculty of um, uh, Pharmacy College and esteemed uh, uh, the key uh, note, um, the benedictory um, lectures uh, we heard in the beginning. With that, yeah. I stop here for the questions. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, elaborate, informative session and uh, very patiently and uh, explained beautifully uh, on the selected topic, sir. We are fortunate to hear from you uh, on the global perspectives on uh, new and emerging developments in pharma industry. And uh, have explained very beautifully, sir, on uh, uh, starting from very uh, starting point of the global landscape of pharma industry about the North America, Latin America, uh, Europe and uh, African regions, and also the functions of uh, various uh, groups of uh, uh, people working for pharma industry, like in R&D, manufacturing analysis, regulatory affairs, et cetera, and uh, uh, how big the pharma industry in US is also, uh, you have enlightened all of us, and uh, how big the uh, setup of US pharma industry and what are the drivers which are taking uh, the U.S. pharma industry as a leader when compared with other pharmaceutical industries and uh, the intellectual property significance in pharma industry and uh, the most rigorous uh, but uh, uh, helpful regulatory systems, how they are working for uh, the growth of pharma and uh, the applications of uh, 3D printing in uh, present day pharma industry and uh, uh, also the size of Indian pharma industry and set up in the generic pharma products in India. And also uh, about the challenges that uh, the world is facing related to COVID-19. And uh, also the present uh, status of uh, uh, the so-called uh, the early detection, uh, which is uh, the evolution of pharma. And uh, also the pharma product development details very beautifully explained it to all of us, sir. Thank you very much for your uh, kind uh, uh, patient explanation to all of us. And uh, now I request, uh, uh, I request our uh, J Dr. Jawahar Garu to take up the uh, question and answer session. Over to Jawahar, sir. Jawahar, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Good evening, Ananda. I am Dr. Jawahar Babu, assistant professor. Department of Pharmaceutical Biotechnology, Hindu College of Pharmacy. 
today we are very much blessed to have rc dubey garu with us the session was very impressive and highly informative sir thank you for presenting this beautiful presentation which is being a high opener for everybody sir so we thankful to you sir and we expect a lot more guidance from you sir sir with your permission i will start the question and answer session sure please guide sir so what is the impact of multinational companies on pharmaceutical sector globally sir yeah so uh, i'm picking your word to uh, answer and uh, that's the answer uh, the global so whole world is globalized and we saw that um, us depends on india and china uh, in terms of supply of api as well as generic so uh, the us uh, and i i'm just keeping focus on us and similar thing is happening because uh, rest of the world they follow the suit um so uh, in us um, there are a lot of emphasis right from the 2016 when the um the cure act uh, came into the picture obama's care uh, on the generic drugs and uh, that has opened up the window uh, for uh, all global players to uh, come and play and india is playing very strongly in that india is one of the major supplier of, uh, of generic drug in us and um, that opens up uh, india to the other pieces of healthcare not only just the pharmaceutical and that's what, where i emphasized on that um, the other uh, changes happening in in us is uh, big data analytics um and uh, real world evidence uh, like uh, for example the fda that approves your drug or uh, even even the repurposed drug uh, we say for the generic uh, they are asking and they have guidance for industry uh, for real world evidence so uh, in july month they had a big Uh, workshop to uh, bring all uh, stakeholders of the industry to familiarize their policy on the real world evidence uh, that is going to shape the r and d and uh, um, innovation and therefore all the manufacturing and therefore all the commercialization and post market uh, surveillance on drug how it is performing whether it's uh, harmful to certain um, uh, sets of patients uh, or it's good for certain sets of patients so you have to provide those so the whole continuum is now covered by um, data based information and fda is uh, is very much emphasizing on that in, in addition to that those who are paying for the prescription or healthcare services like your your generic drug or or branded drug are the insurance companies and they're asking for the similar evidences they're asking for the more sets of evidences uh, before they are going to cover your product so there are another pressure on on to the uh, multinational companies and uh, then again the doctors and hospitals they have to generate evidence that they're writing the prescription they're aware of that this prescription will work for that patient so they are on the performance pressure uh, it's called pay for performance so that that is another piece guiding the shape and all these are boiling to uh, one thing that is lots of data lots of insight generated by analytics and that is called real world data and is feeding back to the industry and the, that's where the, the real opportunities are this is how it's shaping uh, the multinational companies globally and india india has um, many companies um the big ones and we saw uh, one tweet uh, the the catalyzers and ipca they uh, came together and they produced um, so much of drug that got supplied to 31 countries uh, you know, all over the world uh, the hydroxychloroquine so it's not a joke it's big deal from both point india has all potential and capability 
and there is a demand globally. So uh, with that, I say it's a good question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, another question, sir. What is the best way for uh, pharmaceutical promotion in international market, sir? Yeah, so the, the first thing I mentioned, that, and that was my question, uh, going back to the question uh, that mm, how good our intelligence are. So are we aware of that? That, that's where uh, the, the, your answer is. So we have to be very aware what is happening. And based on that, you have to have a strategies and you have to uh, invoke uh, a mechanism where you could include the business people. And that's how I am positioned into this. So I'm giving my, I'm just uh, re uh, recapping uh, the introduction kind words uh, told regarding my introduction. So I got exposed to the industry when I went to the uh, Rutgers Business School and I did dual specialization. One was pharmaceutical management, other one was marketing. And that was the region that I understand science, but in order to understand the, the business commercial component, uh, I needed to understand that. And it exposed me a great deal. And that, that, that's where the answer is. Uh, we should have a mechanism where lots of people should be knowing the industry uh, and I mentioned right from the beginning, I'm not emphasizing that the money should be driving our strategy. But yes, money is the catalyst. It's the fuel that propels your engine. So uh, the marketing is the way you will ensure that how much you will be getting back so that you get feeding back to your R&D. US spends 20% of its uh, revenue. Uh, the pharmaceutical companies on an average uh, spend 20% of its revenue back to R&D. So, if you have more, that 20% spells a bigger sum. Uh, so you have to have a marketing and you, you should uh, start from having uh, a component in academic setup and startup setup and industry setup and government setup. Those who would be um, bridging all these four uh, key players of ecosystem to the market. And uh, the consultants, uh, my consultancy, biopharma consultancy play in that role. So recently, I provided consultancy to one of my friend her company, uh, who is in South Carolina, and um, you know, they needed to take their R and T to the next level, but they needed to build that capability. And uh, the the state uh, funds fifty thousand dollars, not a big sum, but it's a good sum to support the R and D to build this company, uh, so that they can have a, a the check to write. And the, the, with uh, my support, they were able to get it. And now they're, they're building onto the real marketing strategy. So this kind of setup needed to be built. And it's a new area uh, and it's a vast area. And uh, I would say the expenditure of pharmaceutical companies, uh, more than 50% goes into commercialization and focus on, uh, the, focus on marketing and promotion. And it's a very important question. All players of uh, ecosystem should be building this component. In, in, in. Thank you, sir. Sir, one more question, sir. What are the new strategies regarding the development of biologics and biosimilars? Uh, could you repeat your question again? Yes, sir. What are the new strategies regarding the development of biologics and uh, biosimilars? Yeah, so uh, biologics uh, and biosimilar, uh, I know everybody knows it, just I'm the, the, uh, giving the differentiator. Biosimilar is nothing but it's bio biologics, but after patent expires. So uh, the strategy would be uh, mostly same in terms of the product, but uh, product has a life cycle. And uh, like uh, be before IT expires is one major piece of the life cycle, and then uh, post IP life cycle. So uh, from the st strategy standpoint, you break into two pieces and whole life cycle uh, encompasses uh, before IP and after IP, uh, but product remains the same and your uh, all those marketing components and promotional components would be similar, just that uh, you would have a different 
um, co competitive landscape. Like if you have IP, you are, you are one of the IP holder and you have very limited other IP holder who would be competing with you. So your uh, competitor landscape is different and you would have a different strategy based on that because you have a very limited but very strong and profound uh, players in, in place. And um, you would have to have a strategy so that you could place your product into insurance uh, uh, domain, which is called formula, formulary here, so that they can um, allow your product to get prescribed and also support your strategies with uh, the prescribers and hospitals so that they can pre they prescribe your product. So your strategies focus on these two major components. The, 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 the post IP um, arena where the biologics play a role uh, is all the, these all. In addition to that, uh, since there would be uh, low barrier of entries, uh, so there would be lots of copycats and they would be just uh, manufacturing that uh, product uh, and no one would be limiting. So you will have to play into red ocean, which is full of sharks. Uh, and uh, it will all uh, depend on how deep pocket you are, how uh, strong your commercial team is, how much they can have a, a connection with the pairs and how much they can supply and keep all those things. So it's an entirely push strategy, pushing your product to the, the consumers and, and those who are be getting, uh, getting it. And you would be competing against uh, all those players without any power, uh, as, as opposed to uh, the biologics when you have a power of IP. You can fend off those who don't have IP. Uh, so uh, your strategy changes a little bit on that. Thank you, sir. sir one so, more question. Heard, uh, yeah. Sir. Can I have uh, space for me to ask two uh, questions from my side personally. Yes, sir. Please. Okay, sir. Uh, we can answer. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir. Sir, with your permission, uh, uh, Dr. Dubey, sir, uh, usually uh, regulatory clearances takes a lot of time from phase one to phase two and then to phase three. And uh, what sort of exceptions that uh, the regulatory bodies are going to give for so that uh, faster COVID-19 vaccine clearances uh, will take place and will come into the market so that the people will come out of this pandemic? Yeah, so one of the mechanisms that US follow, and it Sir. did immediately, is uh, emergency use um, uh, approval, uh, EUA. E and, uh, yes, emergency use approval. And lots of products um, in diagnostics specifically, because uh, and that's where the first starting point was to uh, diagnose as many people as possible so that you could contain. Um, and it's like a, a faster thing to achieve uh, in terms of uh, uh, handling the pandemic. So getting drug, and as you mentioned that, uh, even if it is repurposed, uh, it has to go through the, the, uh, all those steps of uh, development, phase one, phase two, phase three, um, sometimes sure. it can be accelerated phase two and then approval. Uh, so uh, still it takes time, but diagnostic was faster and that was the one of the approach to contain the spread of the uh, pandemic. And uh, they started with that and lots of products got approved. Um, New Jersey IMN from Rutgers, uh, it uh, brought uh, a revolutionary product uh, that you use saliva and you could get the result in a matter of hours in opposed to uh, opposed to a few days. Uh, and you could set up that thing in somewhere in the parking. So it, it uh, revolutionized how uh, the detection of uh, uh, the infected patient could be done and it helped big way. So uh, th these are the few things um, USA is doing. Uh, th th they, they have opened up for uh, drugs as well. So all those are uh, like uh, we have um, like eight leading uh, products uh, that are in pipeline for uh, vaccines. And sure. uh, I would say uh, over 200 clinical trials going on um, regarding various types of uh, uh, drugs, uh, including repurposed or uh, novel drugs. Um, so, uh, and uh, the, they're open for EUA and it will be approved pretty fast. Not only that, uh, the sure. government is also supporting big way 
to boost uh, these uh, uh, activities so that it can be accelerated. So there is a new policy, uh, which mm -hmm. in fact requires FDA and FDA has implemented already to accelerate approval and um, to provide fun, get, get, uh, align with the government funding to accelerate it. So uh, the, the, you must have heard that uh, they pitch in uh, two, about $2 billion for the leading um, clinical trial happening for the vaccine uh, for Pfizer. So uh, this kind of um, impetus is uh, given uh, in combination with the regulatory body uh, to accelerate the approval pathway, as well as uh, all those uh, fuel that are needed to accelerate uh, is coming from the government. Uh, yes. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, sir, from the point of uh, uh, guidance as a HOD to our uh, departmental students of regulatory, which area uh, would you suggest as far as today's scenario is concerned uh, for their better growth uh, in regulatory affairs uh, to select their path, like in medical devices or generic drugs or APIs or formulations? Uh, which would give them a better chance for their career growth, uh, sir, as a regulatory specialist? Yes, so uh, I am in a uh, little bit of uh, regulatory affairs arena, and uh, I would just uh, share what I have picked up from there, and sir. probably that would be uh, some of the insight uh, helping uh, how to think um, so in uh, U.S. regulatory affairs is not only uh, a regulatory body, uh, as we say, uh, as we think that, okay, you go with your um, uh, uh, product for market approval and they will scrutinize you, tear apart, uh, you poking your all holes uh, and uh, give you a tough time. Uh, it's not that. They're very stringent. If you don't have evidences, uh, they won't let you pass. But they will play a big role hand-holding and they will guide you right from the beginning uh, when you file IND, um, the, the uh, first CTA uh, in Europe uh, that you do uh, for trial uh, uh, application that they say, okay, everything looks fine. We don't have any issue. You can start your trial. So that nod come from regulatory agency, and that's very important to start anything in human, and that's where, when the development happens and the big uh, questions are answered. So regulatory right. affairs play a big role right from there, and they guide, uh, uh, give guidance that, okay, they, you're best on what you have provided evidence, you have a good potential, focus on these things, focus on these things, so that as you are developing your drug through phase one, phase two, phase three, you are generating these data for us and convince us uh, that your product has uh, these clinical benefits uh, against this risk and still going to bring value and we will be satisfied. So they guide right from the beginning. And this kind of thing has to happen. And this uh, information they get from academic, uh, uh, academic institution, NIH um, mm -hmm. and um, cancer institutes uh, and all those institutes, uh, they, have, they are hired, hardwired with them. They get all insight. And based on that, they provide all these. So they're even the staff are brought in from, uh, they, they are expert in, uh, they, they were expert in, in industry and uh, uh, academia, and they, they provide insight and guide FDA how to help industry and uh, help them uh, get the product out. So the industry, uh, the academia should also be thinking how they should have in their um, curriculum so that they can um, have a great connection and they can play partner in providing insight and background to uh, the regulatory affairs and policymakers so that that kind of policy making happens. And that the uh, uh, most important piece that propels the industry is uh, partnering. The regulatory agencies, they should be partnering and their partnering depends on the information academia generates. So this kind of feedback academia should be producing and playing partner and supporting regulatory agencies. Thank you, sir. And uh, one of our regulatory student is asking like, which region of uh, the world uh, regulatory offer, uh, fires, uh, will offer a better uh, 
uh, growth for their career like european region or latin american region row or which region offers uh, better uh, career options for them as far as their uh, regulatory perspectives are concerned one student one student is asking sir yeah so uh, let me put myself also into uh, the, uh, the same perspective uh, it's a uh, ocean so the, yeah. it's like uh, regulatory affairs is ocean and it's ever changing. So uh, there is no limit to learning and I'm in the same boat. I'm learning as well. Um, so my, my, I'm giving perspective from how I'm learning and which sources I'm using. Yeah. So I uh, focus on FDA and EU. They are the key players. And the reason is this, that uh, they are a major part of the economy and therefore they are getting more drugs and uh, more players, they're serving more uh, patients. So their input in terms of regulatory policies and uh, the conduct is very robust and comprehensive. So, uh, the, and uh, as I said, it's a comprehensive, it would be overwhelming to even <laughs> follow these two agencies. Uh, and um, that would keep you satiated uh, for your inquisitiveness in, in terms of learning. So start oh, with thank you, sir. Uh, FDA and EU, EMA. Yes, EMA. Yeah. Yes. Sir, in India now, the new regulations for the medical devices are uh, coming into work. So any uh, additional uh, certificate courses or uh, any um, additional inputs that a student can get from uh, any regulatory bodies or any other institutes so that they will get placed better uh, for medical devices uh, manufacturing units in regulatory uh, uh, functions. One student is asking this doubt, sir. For excellent medical question. devices. Yeah, sir. yeah, excellent question. And this is one of the uh, piece, uh, one of the uh, theme of this webinar today that they should be knowing where are the next steps. Uh, sure. and how to go about it. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, the FDA and EMA, they are very um, proactive in terms of how to bring the knowledge so that uh, the gaps are less and less. So what they do is they have lots of reading ma materials, they conduct a yeah. lot of uh, mm, webinars and seminars, and they keep the videos available. And um, sure. they also have uh, lots of publications. So those would be great uh, sources to learn. And in order to tailor your like learning and get the certification, there are many agencies and uh, I'm not in that space. So I sure. don't want to misinform any students. And now it's a day of like uh, the, the days are uh, digitalized. So as much as information I have, uh, you also have. So uh, start, take advantage of uh, my recommendation would be take advantage of freely available uh, information. And since it's regulatory affairs, so the bodies who, who um, oversee the regulatory affairs, learn from that perspective. And any area that interests you, uh, and I mentioned it's an ocean. So any area it sends you. For, for example, I work into one space which is called transparency and disclosure. So this is a new, not new thing, but maybe new for few of us. So EMA, as I mentioned, it has got a policy 70. So policy 70 now requires any drug is approved for marketing. The day it is approved, you have one year to publish all those information which you submitted in dossier in public domain. So what is it means? You have to take care of two things. One, patient information, you cannot disclose it. Other is commercial information from your company that you don't want to disclose, otherwise you will be competed out. So the two key information you have to uh, not disclose, but you have to disclose all material information so that it is available in public domain. And it's a big deal. And it's a regulatory uh, requirement. And it opens up a new uh, arena for uh, how it is regulated, how it will be developed. So see, this is this could be one of the certification course, how you will be dealing with the transparency and disclosure. So I'm giving you just example. I'm not saying this is the most yeah. important or important thing. Yes, but sir. The, this kinds of 
small, small pieces will keep you very busy for a while in, in terms of learning. And uh, there is unlimited uh, aspects that you would like to learn. And um, probably it would be <laughs> another webinar needed to discuss, I mean, yeah. describe that and cover few of you know, good ones and important ones. And I would encourage your faculty to uh, do that because this is very important um, information for, for the students. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, I have one question, sir. Uh, on behalf of biotechnology department, what incentives given by the US government to set a startup company? Biotech startup company, what incentives are given by the US government? Yeah, so US government um, provide big support right from the academia, which feeds into the startups. So IP is the starting point for startups and academia uh, developed that. So in the US government starts from there, uh, provide support. And um, uh, there are clusters in US and uh, the government uh, work with those clusters uh, and the academia and the startups, they get support. So I'm just going to give you example of one cluster because it's so vast and question is very important. So I want to be specific so that you get a sense so in, in US, there are two big clusters. One is in San Francisco, another one is in uh, Boston, Cambridge area. And uh, my workplace is in Boston, Cambridge area. So I got a chance to uh, explore that. And my job is also to know that. So Boston, Cambridge area, a Massachusetts uh, cluster, it gets $2.1 billion government funding uh, as form of grant, highest in US. So you have Harvard, you have MIT, and many other institutions they get and they generate highest number of IP in, in the coast. And uh, that, those IPs are used and supported by um, the, the investors, private investors to do the startups. So uh, the, uh, the US government uh, pitch in uh, like uh, one third of money and rest of that is provided by, uh, supported by uh, uh, private uh, investors and that is $8.8 .8 billion. So it's a big sum come from uh, government to support uh, academia and a startup. And there are mechanisms, SBIR grants and commercialization grants. And they are, they are also state levels, the federal level and the state level, I means national level and the state levels. And they support in a startup. And then based on those support, the private parties, the angel uh, investors, the, uh, the institutional venture capitalists, they play a role. And uh, you'll be amazed that uh, Kendall Square is a name where highest number of venture uh, capitalists, they invest in uh, startups. And uh, it's what it does is like 200 clinical trials, 14,000 jobs and uh, 200, 50 million patients served with the product which the pharma company are generating, name any pharma company and they're there. So these kind of ecosystem uh, is built and government plays a big role by supporting academia and startups and it's very important. Yes. Uh, uh, good evening, Udra. This is Shankar Prasad. How are you? I'm doing very well. It's a nice, bright, sunny day out here, and it's a weekend. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I think we uh, made you to get up early in the morning today. <laughs> no, it's just perfect, and, and it gave me longer day uh, of weekend, which is good. <laughs> I got uh, help uh, getting a longer day today. Thank you for that. Do it. Yep. Yeah. So, yes, I just want to brush up some things. I'm just listening to what are the questions that have been asked by some of the people. With respect to the funding and then innovation and other things are concerned, there are quite a number of programs are there in even from the Government of Indian side, Department of Biotechnology, Department of Science and Technology. I think Dr. Jawar has asked the same. Yes. He asked what is the relevance in the U.S. side, but even in Indian side also, uh, we are having quite a number of opportunities, but only the problem is that 
like us we are not having any industry academic collaboration is very minimal in india that uh, due to the various reasons and uh, even the uh, the collaboration between research institutions as well as academic institutions also is very low so first thing is that we have to strengthen those things then a lot of funding options are available and with respect to the uh, the programs uh, i think somebody has asked about the what kind of certified programs uh, we can have and what in this regard i just would like to mention uh, uh, we are just exploring the possibilities uh, with uh, having some certified programs uh, with csir with hindu college as well as certified uh, programs on uh, artificial intelligence uh, iot and 3d and uh, digital programs which i consider to be uh, supposed to be first of its kind in andhra at least i don't know about other places uh, this we are proposing to start maybe very shortly in hindu college thank you yeah thank you uh, the, the uh, thanks again uh, dr Sh shankar prasad for connecting me to this esteemed uh, faculty and guests today and um, especially it's uh, heartwarming to uh, speak to uh, students uh, it's kind of uh, paying back to the country so giving me this opportunity to feel um, uh, like uh, feel good about it uh, good use of my time uh, and uh, of course i uh, i have been working with you uh, since yeah. uh, bio of, uh, philadelphia and uh, right, right. That actually yes that actually interested me to stay uh, connected to india because i know lots of potential there uh, just yeah. we need to fill in the gaps so that mm. um, it builds up and uh, i play a role uh, this way that whatever insight i gather i see that these things are working and we are missing there in india i try to convey to the stakeholders up there recently we had one think tank program where um, uh, chairman of uh, niti ayog uh, mr mm -hmm. amitab khan also yeah. uh, mm, um, shared his thoughts and um, mm, i shared with you maybe it will be worth sharing with the other audiences uh, i provided few perspective uh, in that yeah. aspect and that we i cover we covered in the same space that you mentioned that uh, we are struggling with how to build the ecosystem and the key ingredient ingredient and starting point is academia and then mm. handing over the uh, intellectual properties to uh, entrepreneurs so that they could yeah. do the startups and then supporting that entrepreneurship and academia as well by government and um, the risk taking investors and okay. this is one of the major piece which is missing for example i'm giving you san francisco um, the, the cluster uh, yeah. San Francisco yeah. is uh, Silicon Valley and IT, but biotech yeah. is uh, flourishing up there uh, for one reason. Uh, it doesn't match the Boston, Cambridge area academic institution per se, but what it yeah, has got- Even San Diego is considered to be the, the origin of the biotechnology. Even yes. San Diego, they are doing a lot of work. Yes, but the major, uh, uh, major uh, catalyst is investment. Uh, yeah. And uh, we know uh, Mr. Vinod Kosla, his big. Yeah, Vinod Kosla. And he is investing into uh, great potential um, healthcare and bio biotech uh, companies. And uh, because of that, that uh, thirst, uh, which is coming from the risk taking investment, uh, they are mm -hmm. almost at par of the uh, Cam Cambridge, Boston area cluster. And that is another piece that India needs to build. It uh, means the culture of risk-taking investment. So those no, who one have way I'll agree, money, Rudra, but uh, what is happening is that the overall lead, the government of Indian, India's, or even the company's expenditure or R and D is less than one percent, as against the U.S. of between three to four to five percent. So government is trying their best to increase at least the expenditure on R and D to two percent, so that considerable uh, research will goes on. But in the recent days, uh, May, I think, I think somewhere in uh, March 21, March 21st of uh, this year, government of India has uh, given a 15,000 crores package to promote uh, Baldur industry and APS, which I've just mentioned you a couple of days back last last week when, I have been, when we speak, spoke to each other, I mentioned that. So there is a, I just want to may I, uh, tell the students and the faculty, there's a lot of scope for Baldur's APIs 
and as well as formulation in India, because government India is now one of the number two in uh, manufacturing of these products, and uh, government of India is now in the process of promoting one of the largest three bulk drug parks in India. Each for each park, they are giving around thousand crores as a grant. to only to bring the common facilities and other things and another uh, uh, 7000 crores they are uh, giving to support key ingredients or apis which are uh, 50 out of 53 uh, apis out of which 26 are fermentation based and 27 7 are synthetic based so a lot of things are going on here also so let's see how we are able to catch up the bus and then how the we are able to motivate the students so that they can beneficial with the government schemes yes please yeah thank you sir thank you thank you uh, prasad madhiraj garu for uh, your kind support in organizing this seminar and uh, talking about uh, the industry institute uh, interaction significance and uh, also for the planning of uh, the certified courses with the csir and uh, also about uh, the artificial intelligence and uh, 3d printing etc to be introduced by our college uh, uh, in a short time thank you very much sir for your time and uh, for introducing a wonderful speaker for uh, all the audience and now you, you are welcome much. and it's my pleasure to introduce people like uh, dube rudra we are uh, we just uh, trying our level with to share the knowledge whatever little bit we are having thank uh, you thank you thank you sir Thank you, everybody. Uh, because our secretary and correspondent, sir, uh, Dr. S. Madhusudan Rao, sir. Uh, sir, Kanwilia, uh, sir. Some of the yeah. faculty want to interact with the Dubey, sir. Yeah, uh, please. Because we have already taken two and a half hours of uh, this session. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a very uh, nice session yeah. and really wonderful session. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah. So please go ahead with questions, sir. No problem. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Please, yeah. sir, unmute. Uh, सुनीता मैडम sir hello yeah yes it is audible madam yeah sir i am so happy and appreciate you to have you as a speaker for today's webinar but we are uh, missing you to see directly sir we are unable to see you actually we are eagerly waiting for you Uh, but the session is uh, so so nice wonderful uh, you captivated the spectators by your wonderful lecture undoubtedly your thoughtfulness will always be remembered accordingly the oh, no. academicians have to rethink and work on it uh, it will give rise to ground breaking studies and riveting researching avenues Uh, it could be possible uh, with your uh, valuable support what i feel thank you so much for your spellbound lectures sir once again uh, i would like to share you uh, at this juncture hindu college of pharmacy management uh, made strenuous efforts to conduct such a wonderful webinars where we have covered artificial intelligence 3d printing saas ndds like so on so on during uh, this pandemic situation so covid 19 uh, would be helpful to all of us sir. really we are uh, meeting uh, so so many eminent personalities like you thank you so much sir if possible you please um, visit india tanan we have to see me tanan please sir if you have facility um, i'm sorry, sorry uh, thank the... you very much i appreciate that sorry uh, uh, if i am speaking in the, in the middle um the uh, the uh, i mean i was trying to turn on the video but zoom is unable to detect the camera it came and uh, um i have like inbuilt my 
<laughs> camera in my oh. laptop I'm using for some technical reason it didn't or maybe uh, I wasn't enabled to use my video camera so my I see yeah, like we understood, uh, in, in the zoom setting in the zoom setting I see hmm. already my um, video camera off so maybe uh, yeah. some technical hmm. thing didn't allow me That's or, or our meeting didn't allow me to use video camera uh, I I apologize for that. Uh, I don't know uh, <laughs> why Zoom did that. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, sir. Thank okay. You. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, last question from my side, sir. Sir, what strategies are required in the present education system in India to make the pharma student as an entrepreneur? What's your suggestion? Uh, to take our pharma student as an entrepreneur, sir. Yeah, so uh, I would uh, request them to um, understand the ecosystem in India. And in India, my limited knowledge uh, and exposure um, gives uh, this idea that there are departments of pharmaceutical government body and department of biotechnology, department of science and technology, and they run various schemes and programs that support um, the entrepreneurship and a startup. And uh, Dr. Shankar, Shankar Prasad uh, is uh, one of the eminent who is uh, building the ecosystem for startups and uh, uh, the entrepreneurship. And um, there are many uh, all over the, uh, the country supported and funded by government and private parties. So we have in Bangalore, uh, Bio Innovation Center, we have in Hyderabad, uh, we have uh, like all across India, big setup. And that they support um, any uh, idea that can go up until the IPO. Means the IP idea you could uh, work with, work there, get support from uh, government funding, and uh, try to drive private funding to get those idea converted into IP, and then build the startup. Uh, so uh, learning those um, components uh, would be uh, good starting points. And once you have learned, identify uh, which are the setup. Uh, one of the setup that I am connected with. Um, Bio Innovation Center in Bangalore. Um, uh, they are doing amazing things. They launched nine products recently related to COVID, like uh, two, three days ago. And uh, they have those information in public domain about that. So uh, that spells a success story uh, that how entrepreneurs are starting and uh, making a successful uh, product. So learning those and positioning yourself into that would be a good start point. And uh, also uh, acquiring knowledge about uh, industry and how industry works um, in terms of operation, the commercial aspects as well is also important so that you know that how uh, one product which takes like eight to 12 years to get a product into the market, biopharma product, uh, how, how it uh, navigates its path in terms of uh, taking out the risk and making it successful and keep funding it. So knowing those uh, are also very useful. And I learned that going into, uh, uh, going for a program which has a specialization in uh, pharmaceutical management and uh, biotechnology uh, the, uh, and marketing. So um, learning those would also be helpful. And in, in addition to that program, that specialization, I also had um, entrepreneurship. So combining this uh, skill set also help in uh, venturing into uh, startup and entrepreneurship. Thank you, sir. Sir, over to convenience, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Jawahar Garu, for uh, conducting the question and answer session. I request uh, our secretary and correspondent, Dr. Madhusudan Rogaru, uh, to take over. Over to Dr. Madhusudan Rogaru. Hello. Uh, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Good evening and good morning, Dr. Dubey. Hello. Yes, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes sir. sir. Oh, you have a wonderful man, wonderful uh, student, a wonderful guest. Today we are blessed by your presence. Sir, it's a, it's a mesmerizing speech from you. The sharpness, the spontaneity, the authority that we through you have spoken and you have answered questions. It really, it is uh, mind blowing, sir. Uh, we should uh, initially thank uh, Mr. Shankar Prasad, who is a pillar of strength for us to have shown such a wonderful uh, uh, scientist and uh, academician in you, so that we are today uh, really either uh, benefited a hundredfold by your uh, talk and interaction, sir. Sir, you have promised one more webinar for us. And uh, may, may we have it uh, once again uh, in due course. Sir, yeah, are you listening, sir? Uh, I appreciate <laughs> all, all kind words and I feel humbled and um, I feel uh, a sense of gratitude to yeah, no, uh, no, the no, Hindu Pharmacy yeah, College yeah. for giving me this opportunity and interacting yeah. with this team um, yeah. yes, and um, the faculty and uh, Shankar Prasad uh, has been my favorite all time. You are only, you are only humble to a part. Uh, that shows the man you are, that shows the personality you are. Mm. Actually, you have taken us from mortar and puzzle to the 3D printing and continuous manufacturing and uh, AI. Uh, that is really phenomenal. Uh, and your passion for uh, sharing your uh, views and ideas with students, that is very clearly evident, actually. Uh, that's really wonderful, and you have shown the wonderful sides also. Uh, actually, I have noted some of them. You have shown a beautiful slide, Midas Touch in industry. That is one slide, and then lastly, you have shown a very, very good slide, which corresponds with COVID as well as the country. That is, you said, yeah. respond, recover, and try. That's a wonderful slide. And you have shown one slide, amusingly, Atmanirbhar. Really, it is Atma Bhar rather than Atma Nirbhar, sir, because <laughs> still very shameful. We are important 20% of APS on China. Still, still, we are important. Though Shankar Prasad would not agree with me, he says all greener things uh, from the government of India, but it's really shameful now, sir. We are still having, lo we are contributing 30% and 30 to 40% of the intelligence of US from our intelligence here. All our scientists, all our R&D programs. All our IT professionals, most of them are from India in US. Absolutely. They're doing a lot of wonderful job, like you, yourselves. Like you yourself, they're doing a wonderful job. They're, they're ruling the country, they're ruling the states with, with their intelligence and with their, their capacity. I couldn't agree more. Here yeah. we have visionaries. Yeah, we, we have visionaries, but we have, don't have application. And we have we have a lot of decision makers, advisors, but we don't have commitment. That's really, really the most unfortunate thing about India. We, have to, we don't have national spirit in that sense, like Japan or South Korea or even smaller countries, live alone China. So this is this is a situation which should be corrected from various angles, from various people and various uh, agencies. And as a center, like I said, we lack in academia and industry interface. That's what we are going to try over and we have to bridge that gap with the help of center preserve. That we do, and may we adopt you as one of our honorary advisors in our panel, sir. You don't mind, and yes, uh, really, we will be grateful by your rather uh, over modest uh, presentation of the talk, which is which, which is a hundredfold uh, bigger than you you yourself are uh, present to be because. Uh, it's a re real spontaneity and real uh, the, the authority with which you talk uh, rather explores So thank you so much, Dr. Dube. Uh, you're and welcome. I, I, have to, I, have to, I have to interject one thing, and that, may you, uh, that, that, that probably should have been conveyed to students as well. So um, I, in fact, started my Master of Science Biotechnology in Hyderabad Central University. And I tell you, and then oh, I moved so. to B uh, Banaras Hindu University, and it has got an interesting story and a story to tell students that um, what 
what's the problem and where they need to work. So uh, when so I was, I, I, yes. So when I I was applying for biotechnology All India entrance, we had ten universities participating. Jenny used to conduct that entrance. I had no idea, but to uh, through UGC know about the CCMB that was the premier institute uh, in uh, biotech bio bio uh, field. So I thought maybe going oh, into Hyderabad would be exposing me to the top premier institute. That was the maximum information I had. And I uh, my rank was high, so I got my first choice, choice in Hyderabad Central University. I got admitted, but my health uh, uh, was pretty bad. I had a liver damage, so I could not take great food, tasty food of uh, Andhra Pradesh. So I had to take transfer, and since my rank was good, I was kindly uh, given uh, uh, a transfer to BHU. And uh, it's a great, like a lesson learning for me that yes, lack of information made me go through a lot of uh, issues, but that gap needs to be filled in for students uh, because they are the tomorrow for us and they need to know. And uh, this today's webinar, I took this uh, uh, one responsibility to uh, pay back what I got from other people to give me insight regarding biotechnology entrance exam. One of my friend's brother who was in Delhi, he told me that this happens and I got exposed to that and my life changed. Trust me, my life changed. And um, instead of thinking IAS, IPS and all, my passion for science that drove me into this path and uh, it, it changed forever. And uh, that's how I am here. And I'm, I'm speaking to you and faculty and students. So this information should be uh, shared with the students that now world has changed. All information uh, due to digitalization are at the, their fingertips. They should go out and learn and focus on yeah, yeah. a few areas which interest them and follow them with their best passion. That's really wonderful. That's really wonderful. So, yeah, it's a great opportunity for us to have interaction with you today. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. I appreciate that. It was a great pleasure for me as well. We will be in touch with you. Then. Yes, we will. Right. Thank right. you. Have, have a nice you. evening. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you. Bye for now. Oh, no. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Matsun Ragaru, for uh, especially talking about uh, the significance of uh, the Industry Institute interaction and uh, uh, it is my privilege and uh, honor to uh, propose a vote of thanks on this wonderful occasion, sir. And uh, because uh, sir has given, sir, anything left, sir, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Jawahar, sir? Or oh, yes, I sir. Go? Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, I will, I will go for uh, proposing my uh, vote of thanks for, uh, it is, I feel it as my privilege and honor uh, to propose a vote of thanks on this beautiful occasion. And uh, because sir has uh, patiently uh, spared his time uh, to deliver uh, the content and also uh, answering to all the questions raised by uh, the faculty, students, and participants uh, from the uh, webinar, giving the insight and foresight on the selected topic. And uh, good evening to all enthusiastic and uh, scholastic participants of uh, Pharma Fraternity uh, from across the, the world. And it's my, it's I feel like it's a most uh, educating webinar session by Dr. Uh, Rudra Dubey, uh, the lead medical writing and medical affairs, uh, Eritech Pharma and uh, uh, Ruglers, uh, Ruglers uh, Business School, New Jersey, USA. And uh, today's speaker focused on uh, the global perspectives on uh, new and amazing developments in the pharma industry. And uh, I want to express our sincere thanks to our speaker on behalf of our Hindu College of Pharmacy, management of uh, faculty, students, and all the participants who have participated in today's webinar session. And it's also my privilege to thank uh, management of our college, Hindu College of Pharmacy, our chairman, uh, Sri Jubud Rangaraj Garu, and uh, secretary and correspondent, Dr. S. Madhusudan Rao Garu, principal, Dr. R. Govind Rajan Garu, the vice principal, uh, Professor A. Sunita Madam, and OSD Sitaramai Garu for their support in conduction of this seminar. And also Shankar Prasad Garu for uh, introducing a wonderful speaker to all of us and I acknowledge the unwavering support received from uh, the departmental HODs of our college and uh, faculty and staff members. And also my thanks to all uh, the people who have given their support 
uh, and time in organizing this uh, wonderful webinar and also i would like to acknowledge um, uh, sri shrimati shiva jyoti garu associate professor from department of biotechnology for introducing today's speaker and uh, also dr jawahar garu for uh, dealing with uh, the question answer session and uh, sridhar for his uh, technical support and uh, i am thankful to all the uh, uh, faculty members and uh, especially to the resource person who have greatly helped us in organizing this conference and i appreciate all delegates for their participation and uh, thank you everyone and now i request our technical team to uh, play the national anthem and uh, end the session जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा बिंद हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जल धितरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाधा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता Thank you all uh, and uh, we will end this session.